All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about orders now, but we'll leave uh, orders, for example, for testing and things like that a little bit to the end. We'll talk specifically about medications. Um, it, it's important to, when you're going through the orders, you want to justify each and every order that's on the patient's you know, uh, uh, chart. So basically, if you look at an order, you have to be able to see why they have that. And that's why it's important for you to have really gathered all the information possible before you come to this section. So if a patient is on allopurinol, for example, you have to be able to say why they are on that. What's the indication for that? Does their story match the need, the indication for that particular medication? And you just want to do it one step. They're, they're on, you know, a, a blood thinner, you know, a, 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 a pixaban. For example, you have to be able to say, oh, well, they on a pixel. Why exactly are they on that? Or do they have a history of atrial fibrillation? Do they have, uh, you know, a, a DVT or a PE recently? Or are they on that for a long time, uh, lifetime for some hereditary, you know, hypercoagulable disease? You have to basically look at each order and say, is this needed and does it match my patient's story? And again, that's why you should have obviously looked at the patient's story before he came and did this part, uh, that is the, the orders. So you're justifying each and every order in the patient's job. Next, you go and look at some of the non, uh, uh, you can say, the, 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 let's just say the PRN orders. PRN basically means as needed. Okay, so they have Tylenol for, for uh, acetaminophen for, uh, for headache or fever that's not supposed to be given scheduled, but it, it's there and it's supposed to be given whenever they have a fever, whenever they have a headache. You, you want to be able to say that those orders are needed. Uh, like I said, you, you justified everything, especially the scheduled orders, and now you're in the PRN orders and making sure, okay, is this justified? Is this needed. Some people sometimes, you know, put a bunch of PRN orders. It makes work smoother where if there's an indication for it, the nurse may not necessarily need to call you because it's already there and they'll just, you know, apply and, you know, administer the medications. But sometimes putting too much, especially the things that are not necessarily needed and the things that you probably should address a bit more elaborately when you're called for it. So it's important to be cautious when you're putting PRN orders. Yeah, put important things that will cut across many patients so you do, you, you kind of limit the amount of times you're getting called and things like that, but you don't want to do too much of it and you just leave See, patients chart like a hundred medications that's all PRN and you like you don't even know where the scheduled one is where the PRN one is everything is all, all over the place having said that also with an epic for example which is what most people use I'm sorry you know that the, the people who use other than epic but I think there's some similarities uh, between many of these EMRs but wherever the case may be there are ways that you can arrange your order list that will give you for example orders according to therapeutic class so you would have cardiovascular medications you have endocrine crime medications, you have uh, CNS medications, you'd have all of that. Or you can do it scheduled versus PRN. Everybody has their preferences. Figure out which one works for you. For me, I, I, I tend to do the uh, by therapeutic class because it just works better mentally being able to say, okay, all right, if I'm looking for blood pressure medication, I know exactly where to go. And, you know, everybody should find what works better for them and do do that. And you, you learn what works for you as you go uh, as, as, as you, you know, go further into the practice, you know, I can say. Another very important part to really pay attention to is recent orders. So there's most EMRs you'd find places where you find order history. So you can go there and look at most recent orders because things change rapidly in a hospital setting and you want to be able to keep up with the change. Because sometimes you're not the only one putting orders for the patient. Maybe your attendant is putting an order. Maybe the in, uh, the first year is putting an order. Maybe the second year is putting an order. Maybe you know the senior resident or whoever. Sometimes even you know nurses will put ver verbal orders. For example, you want to keep track of it. Not only for you to know exactly what's happening with the patient, but also for you to make sure that if there is an error, you can fix it. I'll give a very common scenario. You're the second year, and you expect that your first year will be able to put certain orders correctly. And because they're learning, they need, they don't know it all. Sometimes they make mistakes. You, you know, your due diligence, for example, would be you ch constantly checking recent orders and say, okay, did they put something wrong that could potentially hurt a patient? It happens. I'll tell you, it does happen. You want to keep looking at that as frequently as you possibly can 
So you make sure that things are not, you know, whatever errors are fixed before they cause a disaster. And then you can educate the, the first year about how to do that better next time. Because again, it's, 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 a, it's teamwork. You never, you know, in, a, in a training environment, you're rarely alone making decisions. Yes, you want to take the independence and you want to, you know, be able to, to act potentially unsupervised, right? Where you don't always want to ask, uh, have to, uh, ask for things before you do them, but at the same time, you should have enough oversight to make sure the errors are limited significantly. It's also important to check you know, for diet orders and be able to justify whatever diet order you have in there. If a patient is MPO, you have to really ask yourself why they're MPO. A lot of times it's because they have to do a test. A lot of times it's because they have some other medical condition that you know might make them eating uh, cause a bigger problem, whatever, but it's important you're very clear about the orders that you have there, whether it's a particular diet order, whether it's MPO and whatnot.